We often do stories cases that are tragic and senseless, but the story you're about to hear is one of the worst cases that we've ever done to date. They say there is a silver lining to almost any bad situation, but this is one case that we honestly can't think of any. This is the true story of a couple who had been separated by time, only to find each other again and should have been able to live out their days happily together and would have had it not been for Tiffany and Cole. Reggie Sumner had met Carol in high school in their youth. The two got along really well and had always liked each other, but for whatever reason, they had never gotten together. It always seemed when Reggie was single, Carol wasn't and when Carol was, Reggie wasn't. Not long after, Reggie joined the Navy later gotten out and had taken a job working on the railroad and eventually got married. Carol ended up getting married as well, her first husband ended in divorce. She had gotten remarried in this time, her new husband was allegedly very abusive, so once again, she found herself divorced. Things wasn't going so well for Reggie either in the romance department and he too ended up divorced as well. In the time since they had known each other, nearly 40 years had gone by and each were just taking life one day at a time hoping to find happiness one day. Reggie had taken a job at a local cable company where he would answer the phones. One day a call came in and guess who it was. Yep, you guessed it. It was Carol, the one he had often thought about and had always wondered what had happened to her. They were both over the moon, ecstatic getting the chance to find out that they were both now single at the same time. It wasn't long before the two were absolutely inseparable. It wasn't long before the two were married and had moved to Ladson, South Carolina. As it happens with most aging people, time had begun to take its toll on both of them. Reggie suffered from chronic stage 2 diabetes and Carol had all kinds of health problems as well such as liver cancer, fibromyalgia and various other ailments that left life for her very painful. Still, the couple were so kind and generous and even helpful to everyone that they came in contact with. One of those people was a young lady named Tiffany Cole. Tiffany lived just down the street and had gotten to know the elderly couple. Reggie and Carol felt sorry for Tiffany because they believed she had a rough childhood. The couple were always kind to Tiffany and saw that she needed a car. Sell it to her on payment since she didn't have the money to buy it outright. Not only did they do that, they also told her that they were moving to Jacksonville, Florida and if she ever was in the area and needed a place to stay, she was more than welcome to come stay with them. It would be an offer that they would soon come to regret. Tiffany's father had been in and out of prison and had gotten out and landed in the same town as the elderly couple. Tiffany would try to make it down to see her dad when she could, but for whatever reason, didn't stay at his place. Just to tell you how kind and caring Reggie and Carol were, even with all their own health issues, they went out of their way to help Tiffany's ailing father who had also been diagnosed with cancer, despite all the pain and discomfort they were in, they still took care of him. Tiffany had rented a motel there and had went to see her father and had left a large amount of cash and drugs in her hotel room. She came back only to find Michael Jackson breaking into her room. No, not that Michael Jackson! this one. He was in the process of robbing her. The fact that she didn't call the law wasn't that surprising since she had drugs in her room, but she must have had a real brain fart to do what she did next. She started dating him. They were both the same age, both on drugs and both a criminal type, sure why not. They stayed in her hotel and partied until the money ran out and they could no longer afford the room. That's when Tiffany had remembered the offer from the Sumners. She called them up and said she was in town and asked if she could come stay with them and they were both overjoyed to see her come over. They wasn't expecting to see her with a new boyfriend, but they welcomed him too with open arms. When they got there, they made them dinner and allowed them to get cleaned up and prepare their spare room for them, but as the two couples talked, Reggie and Carol couldn't get over how rude and obnoxious Tiff's new boyfriend was. He seemed to be into everything and was very demanding. Still. They tried the best they could to be nice because of their love of Tiffany. During a conversation, Carol had mentioned to Tiffany that they had finally sold their former home in South Carolina for the sum of $99,000. Yes, 
You think the young woman would be happy for her elderly friends who had planned to use the money for a relaxing vacation that they both truly deserved. But nope, not Tiffany. She couldn't wait to take the news back to her useless boyfriend so that they could start planning on robbing the elderly couple. It wasn't long before those plans turned to murder because they didn't want the robbery to be traced back to them. It wasn't long before they enacted the help of two friends of Jackson's, 18-year-old Alan Wade and 18-year-old Bruce Kent Nixon. They stole some shovels from a nearby neighbor and took a drive out in the country to find a place to bury the couple. As they dug a six-foot hole that evening, Tiffany and Cole, the young girl that these two people had doted on and had helped and had loved like a daughter, held the flashlight, knowing this would be their final resting place, also her and her friends could steal their money and belongings. July 8th of 2005, Tiffany rented a Mazda RX-8 from a local car rental and had set off towards the Sumner's home with her boyfriend Jackson and the other two Wade and Nixon. When they got to the home, they dropped Nixon and Wade off to do the actual robbing. They knocked on the door and used the excuse that they needed to use their phone because their car had broken down. Being the kind, caring people that they were, they opened the door and welcomed the young men in their home. Armed with a toy gun that looked real, they grabbed the couple who were both already very weak and frail and tied them up and began demanding their banking information and PIN numbers. Reggie and Carol must have been absolutely terrified. You can imagine their surprise when Tiffany's boyfriend came in and started assisting in the robbery. They must have been thinking, what's going on and where is Tiffany? They took the couple clad in only their pajamas out to the trunk of the couple's white luxury car and shoved them in the trunk on top of each other. Carol had been taking chemotherapy and radiation treatments for her cancer and Reggie was very frail and wearing a leg brace as well. Neither of them stood a chance at fighting back against the three younger men. As they set off, the couple had no idea where they were being taken, but they knew that it couldn't be good. As the trunk was opened, the first thing they saw was the girl they had loved so much, standing there and not doing a thing to help them. They were then duct taped so they couldn't speak and also had tape around their eyes, so the group wouldn't have to look into the eyes of the couple as they killed them. They shoved them off into the six foot deep dark hole and began to shovel the dirt over top of them burying the couple alive who had wanted nothing more than to enjoy out their days together and make up for all the years that they had missed out on together. All of that, for selfish greed. Two days later, the Summer's daughter, Rhonda Alford couldn't reach her mom, which was very unusual as they often talked several times a day. She called the Jacksonville PD to have them check on her parents. When police arrived, they noticed that it had looked like their dinner had been left suddenly and that their car was missing. Two days later, they found the car abandoned. They knew something sinister was going on, but they didn't know the severity of it just yet. The four killers went back to the Sumner's home and had stolen other items and had used their debit card to get a large amount of cash in which they used it to buy expensive champagne, to rent a motel and even a limousine. They took countless selfies with the stolen goods and the money, seemingly not to have a care in the world. That would change soon though. It wasn't long before they tried to use the credit card again and it didn't work. These brainiacs decided to actually call the Jacksonville Police Department to tell them that they were Reggie and Carol and that they had went to Delaware and that they couldn't access their bank account and asked the police to turn their card back on. You think they would have called the bank for that kind of request? The common sense wasn't very common between these four Einsteins. The police were already investigating the disappearance, so they allowed Jackson to talk and when he finished they asked to speak to Carol. He handed the phone to Tiffany and she played the role of Carol. The police wasn't buying it. They kept them on the phone long enough to trace the call. They soon arrested Alan Wade. Tiffany Cole and Michael Jackson on a South Carolina hotel room with all kinds of evidence leading back to the missing couple. Bruce Nixon however was arrested later and it didn't take him any time to spill the beans. He even took them to where the bodies were buried so he could be spared the death penalty for his role in it. When it came out on the news that the couple had been found, Michael's grandmother immediately contacted him and told him that he had been given up by his friend. His next words were ironic. Oh my god, he's gonna kill us all. 
I don't know what's more screwed up. The fact that his grandma was more mad about the fact that he was going to pay for his crimes against a defenseless elderly couple whom he'd robbed of their lives, or the fact that he was more worried about the fact that he was actually going to go to jail for his deeds. Kinda says something about the family, doesn't it? Anywho. After the bodies were recovered, it was discovered that the couple had been buried alive. Can you even imagine how scared and horrified the poor couple must have felt? Bruce Nixon received 45 years since he had helped police find the bodies. Wade, Jackson and Cole all received death sentences, however, Tiffany Coles was not a unanimous decision, it was 9-3 for the death penalty. They spent years on death row. But when Florida recently changed its law stating that all death sentences have to be unanimous. Tiffany will soon be resentenced, most likely to life in prison. Although she had no qualms in snuffing out the life of a loving couple, she has continuously begged for her life to be spared, ironic isn't it? We'd love to hear your thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell to see next week's story and please consider following us on social media. Till next time!